seem to lung cancer when it causes no symptoms. Um, and because un lung cancer is a very aggressive type of cancer, the best way to treat it would be to catch it early. And so really catching it early when it's small is key to lung cancer treatment. So how do we find lung cancer early? So um, the, the best way to find lung cancer early is by getting a picture of it. And in the past, we used to do chest x-rays. But unfortunately, chest x-rays don't give you as much detail as a CT scan. And now there's been data showing that if you do a low dose CT scan, uh, which has a low amount of radiation, you can find images of lung cancer that are very small. And I'll show you the sizes that we can find. Um, so what is a CT scan? So a CT scan gives you a three dim dimensional uh, view of what's happening in the lungs, similar to an x-ray. And a low dose CT scan has five times less radiation than a traditional CT scan machine. Um, and when we kind of quantify how much radiation you have, a low-dose CT scan is the equivalent of having, uh, of taking 50 transatlantic flights uh, to Europe, because every time you're on a flight, you get some cosmic radiation, so that's sort of the equivalent, if you think of it, in number of flights, um, or 15 traditional x-rays. And so this was uh, just, I, I didn't want to bog you down with too much statistics, but this was uh, the seminal trial that demonstrated that chest x-rays were inferior to low-dose CT when looking for lung cancer. And you can see that um, on the top panel above, in the patients that had the low-dose CT, uh, we diagnosed lung cancer more than in those that had chest x-ray. And in the bottom slides, we see that people that had chest x-rays in instead of CTs uh, died more than those patients who had CTs because in the patients where we did the CTs, we caught it early and we cured the lung cancer. So the study found there was a 7% overall mortality benefit to having that CT and that lung cancer mortality was reduced by 20%. Now this is groundbreaking in terms of the magnitude of benefit uh, because it really showed a, a very large mortality benefit. Um, this was the biggest trial. There had been other trials that were not powered for mortalities that have been done since then. And just a couple weeks ago at the World Lung Cancer Conference in Toronto, they published the results of the second largest randomized trial of lung cancer screening. And this was a Dutch trial that they mailed out mailings to people and asked them about their smoking history, their occupational exposures, and their family history. And based on the results of those questions, they offered screening to people who were at high risk of lung cancer. And in that trial, they were able to find 50% of the lung cancer at a point where they were small enough to remove. Um, and the results of this trial showed an even greater benefit than the previous one of 26% in men. And amazingly, in women, lung cancer mortality was reduced between 36 and 61%. So that's a huge benefit for lung cancer screening. There was a lot of debate before this trial was published, but now the book is really closed. It's clear that lung cancer screening saves lives um, and has you know, made a lot of impetus in the field to uh, try and diagnose lung cancer early and treat it early. So just a bit of summary. So this has been recommended in Canada to screen people at high risk since 2016. Um, and as I said, the mortality benefit is uh, very important, and it's actually a larger benefit than prostate cancer screening and breast cancer screening. Why it isn't, um, hasn't already sort of started, there's a lot of political issues with lung cancer screening, you know, and, and um, there's a lot of nihilism with lung cancer, unfortunately, because of people have smoked. There's a lot of self-blame. People don't really talk about it. So it's traditionally very underfunded. And when this comes up for, you know, discussion, it's not prioritized the same way, for example, breast cancer would be because one, there didn't used to be very many lung cancer survivors, and two, lung cancer survivors tend to be a little bit older than, for example, when you compare them to breast cancer survivors. Um, so I think for me as a woman, the fact that I can be involved in a program that has such a huge benefit for women in particular uh, is really, um, you know, encouraged me to be involved in this field. And I think that's really important moving forward is that we remember how much lung cancer affects both women and men and the great benefit there is in women.
So how do you calculate your individual lung cancer risk? So this is one thing that we'll be doing as part of our program is individualizing um, lung cancer risk calculation for people who are interested in screening. So our calculators sort of have multiple um, areas that we ask questions in very detailed, a little bit more detailed than this, about smoking history, family history, age, secondhand smoke exposure throughout your life, radon exposure and occupational exposure. So all of these have been associated with increasing lung cancer risk. And so we have a website if you're interested in looking or, or, or finding out a little bit more about lung cancer screening. These are the Canadian guidelines for screening that you see here. So those between 55 and 75, current or for, former smokers, and people who have a significant smoking history. So amongst these people, we'll be further asking questions about their lung cancer risk. Um, and it's really individualized to each patient. Through our program, we're going to be um, modeling risk using a risk calculator. And with each patient that we, dis we discuss the risks and benefits of screening, they'll get a similar kind of graphic to this explaining how high their individual risk of lung cancer is. So people with a risk above about 2% over six years are considered people who would benefit from screening. So this was, for example, a sample patient that I entered who was 65 with a 45 pack year smoking history. So what do we find when we screen for lung cancer? So I just put this picture up so you can see a bit the difference in size that we find. So when we do a low dose CT screen, we can find nodules that are very small, so as small as a grain of rice. Um, when we do a chest x-ray, we find something that's about the size of a quarter. So, you know, the advantage to doing the low-dose CT is we find it when it's small. We can either follow it until it needs to be removed or remove it right away, depending on the situation. But this gives you a little bit of an idea. This is the actual images we get. So on, the, on your right, you'll see the low-dose CT, and you'll see I look at these every day, so maybe it's not as obvious to you as it is to me, but this is a slice of a patient. This is the right lung, this is the left lung, and these white lines are the vessels throughout the lung, and this little spot here is a lung cancer. On the chest x-ray here, this is the right lung, this is the left lung, and you'll see here that there's a lung cancer right there. So, you know, the, the, the images of the CT scan, the chest x-ray, we get one picture, the CT scan, we get multiple images, so we, we make multiple slices throughout the lungs, and we can see in 3D what's happening in the lungs. So we have softwares that allow us to look at these spots in 3D and measure the size and see if they grow over time. In general, things that grow are things that we consider uh, worrisome for cancer. So what do we do once we find something in a spot that might be a cancer? Um, so not everyone who will be screened will have a suspicious spot, but some people will have a spot that's, that is concerning. Um, so sometimes we will do bronchoscopies. So this is an electromagnetic navigation where we can look in 3D as we go into your lungs and biopsy small spots in the lung that we see on the CT scan. So in real time, we have the images of the CT scan, and we can see those at the same time as we're inside the lungs. So that's just a bit of a summary about lung cancer. So our program at the MUHC will be selecting patients who are high risk. Um, we'll be offering smoking cessation to those patients who are still smoking through the Canadian Cancer Society, Lynn Jarrett. And we'll be using standardized interpretation for all patients who are screened. And the goal of that standardized interpretation is that so that family doctors will be able to follow patients uh, with us and um, know what to do after the scan report. All patients will have a clear pathway for being referred to either a respirologist like myself or a surgeon um, to see if they need further testing. Um, and we will be providing both educational tools and shared decision making with our nurse navigator. Um, the nurse navigator is very important for us because she really explains the risks and benefits to each patient based on their situation and, and makes sure that people come for their follow-up appointments, etc. cetera. Um, and that's really important in a screening program because we, we would like patients to be screened yearly with a CT for three years. 
So this is a little bit of, just to give you a sample of what it looks like when you get your lung cancer risk calculated. This is a, a patient portal that we're creating to be live with our website where you put it in all your family history, your smoking history, et cetera, and it, and it uh, tells you whether or not you should be screened. And this is some of the samples. It's not an actual patient, it's myself. Um, but it's a sample letter that you would get as part of our screening program. So uh, we are hoping that our program in, in, at McGill will be used throughout the province. Uh, and the results of our program are kind of being fed forward to the Institut National de Santé Publique in Quebec. And I'm one of the respirologists working with them. So we're hoping that the way we've modeled following patients and patient registration will be used across the province. So this is the team that works with me, so I'm not in this alone. There's two respirologists at the MUHC who, have been, who will be seeing patients as well for lung cancer screening. We have two trust radiologists who are helping us with scan interpretation. Uh, that's our, our nurse who's working with us and the program coordinator. So thank you for uh, listening to me speak. I'll, I'll leave the mic to the surgeons who uh, will discuss about what happens after we find a cancer on screening.